Do you even know Liam Gallagher? Uh, I have had the pleasure, actually. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're looking at celebs who have had encounters with either Liam or Noel Gallagher, or both, and have lived to tell about it. There was a champagne supernova in the sky. <laughs> Matt Lucas. And you'll remember this, of course. Uh, the newspapers were pitting uh, Oasis against Blur. Uh, I don't it was remember that Oasis that. v Blur. <laughs> yeah. okay, I well, was in the thick of it, man. I, was, I don't remember any of that. Well, of course, you... you may have forgotten that Matt Lucas supported Blur on tour in 1995, but he did after featuring in the music video for Country House. Toured with Blur the week they released The Great Escape, which is a wonderful album, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> he talked on the Jonathan Ross show of an incident where he was with Damon Albarn in Soho's Groucho Club when they spotted Liam Gallagher across the room. After briefly thinking Damon and Liam might come to blows, they apparently all sat down for a friendly drink. Yeah. And the three of us sat down and had a nice drink. Oh, did we? It was very civil. And I, I think Damon said one. something like, you're all right, it's your brother I don't like. Liam was also on the show, though, and not only said he didn't remember any of the feud with Blur, an obvious lie, but that he didn't remember this drink either, asking Lucas if he'd actually run into Noel instead. It was, so, I don't know I don't know if that happened, man. <laughs> it did. Yeah. The veil was but dropped. Did we break bread together? You did. Mick Jagger. The legendary Rolling Stones frontman actually hosted Oasis on Mustique in 1996, but that didn't stop him from talking about them in the press. In 2020, Jagger waded into a feud between Oasis and Kings of Leon, beginning when Liam criticised Kings of Leon's music, while Kings of Leon bit back by saying that, despite also being a family band, they don't fight the way the Gallaghers do. Jagger was firmly on the King's side, and went after Liam for his statuesque stage persona, not to mention the fact that they're known to insult their audiences. Then again, Noel did admit to nicking a toy piano that belonged to one of Jagger's kids during the Be Here Now sessions. The Beatles. In a similar vein to Jagger, the remaining Beatles discussed Oasis at the height of their fame in the 1990s. Oasis were never shy about taking inspiration from the Beatles, and were hailed by many as the biggest British band since the Fab Four, but neither Paul McCartney nor George Harrison were fans. McCartney famously said that Oasis comparing themselves to the Beatles was, quote, their biggest mistake, while Harrison was, unsurprisingly, even less diplomatic. Oh, he's like a bit out of date. You know, I mean, he's a bit of a... It's just, it's just silly. He hit out at Liam, calling him a pain, and suggested that Noel should go solo. Liam publicly called Harrison a nipple for this. Yes, really. But years later said that he was so starstruck by Ringo that he had to leave the room. I think he's totally missed the bus, and I think it was proven when you see the band without him singing. You know, they're more in tune. Brett Anderson. Oasis have arguably had a bigger legacy than any of Britpop's other big four, but as well as feuding non-stop with Blur, they've also come to verbal blows with Brett Anderson, frontman of Suede. Though they agree on some things, such as both Anderson and Liam saying that their bands weren't Britpop, a sentiment echoed by Pulp's Jarvis Cocker, a row continues. Following the news of Oasis Live 25, people were quick to suggest that Suede could open for them, only for Liam to call Anderson cocky on Twitter. And despite Liam saying Oasis isn't Britpop, he also defended the genre and his band when Anderson, back in 2019, called it, quote, a laddish, distasteful, misogynistic, nationalist cartoon. Lily Allen. Now this is a story. In 2018, Lily Allen released a memoir, My Thoughts Exactly, and told a particularly risque story about Liam Gallagher. But see your book now, Miss Lily. Yeah. It said, Raw, you gave the Gallagher man the whap, yeah? <laughs> She confessed that she and him had had a tryst while flying on the same plane, joining the Mile High Club, as it were. She later appeared on The Big Nasty Show to do press for the book and was, of course, grilled about this encounter, repeating some of the less lurid details for Channel 4. Look at my sky sex. Okay. That, it's Mile High Club as well, isn't it? Yeah. In the air. <laughs> no, you, see, you see with you and Liam Gallagher, did you date or was it just like a flick? Yeah, it was or... just a little seven hour thing. <laughs> She also said she couldn't remember who made the first move. More dramatic, Liam was married at the time, though he's well known to have had many affairs. You know, we met in, a, in the lounge before we got on the plane and then, you know, got quite drunk and then, yeah. Phil Collins. They're, they're just horrible. <laughs> they're just, they're just horrible. Horrible. horrible guys. 
They're rude, not as talented as they think they are. Mm. Another music titan the brothers are feuding with. This time it was Noel Gallagher taking aim at Phil Collins. He's gone after him relentlessly, calling him a Tory, which Collins denied, and even the Antichrist. Eventually he turned up on Room 101 and decided he wanted to send the Gallaghers into the abyss. He's actually called me the Antichrist of music. But it's not just barbs in the tabloids. According to Collins, in his memoir, they did actually meet in Mustique, and Collins asked Noel if he wanted to jam. Noel refused, so presumably he stands by all the things he said. Still, voting Labour in an election to keep Phil Collins out of the country is certainly an interesting pitch. Uh, everybody can ass assumes that I'm a conservative, see, because mm. I've got a lot of money. Mm. But I'm not a conservative at all, never have been. An evening at Downing Street. He's got morning glory and life's a different story. Everything's going jack and jory. More from Damon Albarn. In 1997, Cool Britannia was in full swing. Oasis and the Spice Girls had taken over the world, and Tory rule was at an end, with Tony Blair entering Downing Street to the tune of Things Can Only Get Better by Dream. There was just something about that generation and that whole thing, and the new Labour thing and all that. It was just a moment in time. To celebrate the new era, Blair invited some of the country's most influential Brits to a shindig at number 10. Noel Gallagher accepted his invitation, while both Liam and Damon Albarn refused. That trip to Downing Street, why wouldn't you go? You know, I was like, I was, I'm, I'm too nosy to turn that invitation of down. Of course. Damon wasted no time mocking Noel for this, implying that he was a sellout. Noel got more flack for this than Blur did for featuring Labour politician Ken Livingstone on The Great Escape, although reportedly they did that because they didn't like him. Piers Morgan had wrote a book where he said that I was walking around with a magic marker trying to find Margaret Thatcher's portrait to draw a tash on her. <laughs> Lewis Capaldi. No, I actually, I actually met him. Did you? I met him. I, when? Uh, like, what, uh, recently? At that festival, Did, uh, Mad uh, Cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It Hugs. was lovely. I gave him a big hug. After skyrocketing to fame a few years ago, Lewis Capaldi wasted no time getting into a spat with Noel Gallagher over the future of music. Who's well, this Capaldi fella? Lewis Capaldi. Back in 2019, Capaldi turned up at Glastonbury wearing a bucket hat and parker, looking just like Oasis in the 90s, after Noel publicly insulted him during a radio interview. He later wore a t-shirt with Noel Gallagher's face and a big heart and was snapped kissing Noel's daughter, Anais, on the cheek, all to keep riling him up. My best pal, Noel. Oh, my, it's I, I the best. Him. I love him to bits. I was and, hoping uh, you were going to propose to Anais the other night as well. Oh, right, I mean, yeah, that would yeah, have been yeah, totally. awesome. Uh, Noel called him Chewbacca and said that he's everything that's wrong with modern music. Gaza. Paul Gascoigne is a magnet for weird stories of his own. Remember the time he tried to intervene in a standoff between police and serial killer Raoul Mort with chicken, lager and a fishing rod? Someone said Leon Galgos in the restaurant, posh as But he also, perhaps unsurprisingly, once got into a physical fight with Liam Gallagher. The very first time they met, they got into an argument about steak, when Gaza nicked Liam's while he went to the loo. And I went, hi Liam. First time I met him, he went, oh, are you all right, Gaza? I said, no. And and he had a big full of steak in front of him. Gaza discussed it on a podcast years later, saying that after Liam found out what had happened, he left and returned with a fire extinguisher, spraying Gascoigne with it. But they still had dinner together afterwards. He come back with a fire extinguisher and just f***ing all that just all <laughs> over. Wow, Jesus Christ, he just sprayed it all over his man, just all over the table. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Sasha Baron Cohen. I said, listen, I'm going to make a joke about you. Is that OK? And he said, yeah, no problem. You know, go on, do it. <laughs> Over in the US, Baron Cohen appeared on Conan to discuss his then new film Grimsby, which went on to be, undeniably, one of the worst things he'd made in his entire career. Conan brought up that visually, Baron Cohen's character Nobby, a drunken, loutish football hooligan, may be based on Liam Gallagher. He goes, who's the f greatest living rock star? And so I'm sitting next to Bono and Liam Gallagher. <laughs> Baron Cohen launched into an anecdote about the time he met Liam personally at an award show, encountering him at the after party having a debate with Bono. He goes, but John Lennon, you said living. He yes. goes, John Lennon is alive. And he stood up and he goes, I am John Lennon. <laughs> He asked Baron Cohen a very loaded question, fell over, and then threatened to stab him because Cohen hadn't told a joke he'd previously promised to. He goes, you know what? I'm going to stab you. And, what? And I know. I'm stab I said, you? I said, what? I said, what? He goes, I'm going to stab you in the eye. 
Let us know in the comments whether you managed to get tickets to Oasis's 2025 tour. Eventually he didn't stab me, so I thought I would uh, avoid confrontation by right. having my hair done like him in the next... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.